Hey, we're Flick and Joe, and this is our dog, Walter. In 2022, we made the crazy decision to quit our full-time jobs, pack up our lives, and move aboard our Blue Water sailing boat. We spent many months refitting her and getting her ready for our plans until one day we actually did it. We cast off the lines, we pointed her south, and off we went. We've now sailed over a thousand nautical miles, dodging orcas, yes, actually, and most of the rocks along the way. Join us for the beautiful, quite stressful, but endlessly eventful life that is full-time living aboard. In this week's episode, we lose the prop shaft and the boat starts sinking, we accidentally anchor in the middle of an Ironman race, and we explore the beautiful town of Kashkai. Ah, oh, for God's sake, the prop's gone. What do you mean? It's gone. What do you... This water's coming in, we need to bung it. We remembered that we'd bought a bag of wooden bungs prior to leaving the UK, so quickly grabbed one of those and pushed it into the rubber shaft seal. The water had stopped. Great. In about 30 to 45 seconds, the engine room bilge was totally full and overflowing into the main bilge, maybe 15, 20 litres of water. We used the GoPro underwater and confirmed that the prop shaft was still there. Of course it was. The shaft anode was rubbing against the P-bracket. It couldn't slide out any further, even if it wanted to. We can't remove our shaft with the prop still on, so if the shaft anode wasn't there, then the prop shaft would get stuck on the rudder. Part of me was worried about whether it would affect the steering or damage the rudder. We were still about 2-3 miles away from the anchorage at Kashkai, so we lowered our dinghy, mounted the 6 horsepower outboard and began towing our 14 tonne boat. We were able to do about 3-4 to four knots, as there was no wind or waves at all, flat calm seas. So it was me and the boat helming and keeping an eye off fishing boys and then Joe and the dinghy pushing us along. All fine, we'd coped, or so I thought. As we came round the final headland into Kashkais, we just totally stopped still. We were hit with a 20 knot headwind. Our little six horsepower outboard could no longer push us forward. We were just stationary. And when you're stationary, you lose all steerage. So the wind was actually pushing us around. We had already messaged some friends, Sailing Fish Cake, who we met in Porto, who we knew were in the anchorage, and they were watching us come into Kashkai or marine traffic. I messaged them again, slightly panicked, and this time they came out to try and help us. The sun had set and it was pitch black. Fish Cake had a four horsepower outboard, and this, combined with our six horsepower, meant that we could tow Nondes at about half a knot forward. So I'm pretty sure you can imagine it was very slow progress. Meanwhile, on deck, I was not coping too well. There were boats everywhere. Kashkais is a busy anchorage, and we were at the point now that we were crossing the entrance to the marina. I had no real steerage, so the autopilot couldn't really help me, and I was having to shout to motorboats nearby as their radio was too crackly to speak with them. I couldn't hear what Joe was saying because the wind was so strong in my ears and he was quite low in the water from the dinghy shouting up to me. Between us, we managed to get the boat in a position to drop the anchor though, and I enabled the autopilot, hoping that would be able to hold her while I prepped the anchor. I then ran back, checked we were still in a good position and that Joe was happy for me to drop the anchor. It all feels a bit blurry looking back. I was obviously slightly overwhelmed, but luckily at this point, another cruiser who'd seen that we were in trouble had jumped in their dinghy and offered to help. They had a 15 horsepower outboard and we were so grateful. They could tow Nondes on their own, which meant that Joe could get back onto the boat and help us with anchoring. We never saw them again, but we will always be grateful of their help that evening. I'll put that down as one of the worst night's sleep I've ever had. Without our own engine, we couldn't back down on the anchor, and in the final throws of all the chaos, Joe managed to drop the kill cord for the outboard engine, so we had no outboard either. So if we dragged, we'd have had to hoist the sails and just carry on, I guess. We woke up very early in the morning to the Portuguese national anthem being played on a loudspeaker and a lot of commotion outside our boat. We eventually realised that we had anchored in the middle of an Ironman event. So, how did we fix it? That very morning, I dove down on the boat with a wetsuit, mask and flippers. I was able to position myself underwater with the prop shaft on the back of my shoulders and my feet on the rudder, and then slowly push on my legs, pushing the prop shaft back inside the boat. It worked perfectly. Except, we had to repeat this process a couple of times. On the first try, the rubber shaft seal leaked quite a lot. The wooden bung had stretched the rubber shaft seal overnight. So, what did we do? We slowly removed the wooden bung over 10 minutes or so to allow it to gradually shrink back to shape with the assistance of a heat gun. 
Then I made one more trip under the boat to push the prop shaft back in and voila, just like that, we had our engine back again. So we headed into the marina as we had some parcels waiting for us and there were some nasty southerly winds forecast that would make the anchorage untenable. So many British athletes racing here, Duncan is on the way to the finish line. Well done, Duncan. And we're going to be on the way to the next turn, Luke, for Switzerland, Bakri, and for Ireland, it's James Gibbon. Well done, Jimmy. Great boy. 